Hello everyone, thank you for visiting my YouTube channel. I uploaded up two previous video and covering tutorials of spot healing and skin retouching. In this tutorial, what we're going to be covering is dodge and burn using curves. Not the dodge tool or the burn tool. Just just these buttons over here that you see. There's a dodge tool and there's a burn tool. Completely different. A little different uh, than uh, that we all used to out of the box of Photoshop. When I use the heal and burn um, technique is if I want to even out the shadows on a person's face or a person's skin, um, have to be very careful with it and you don't want to do too much of it or else your picture will look flat. So in this photo shoot that I did, um, the model Jenny over here, she's a really awesome model. So the picture looks great as is but obviously there's certain areas that I want to um, even up such as this little shadow over here let's make this thing smaller shadow over here uh, maybe lighten this area up just to even this little shadow up but not too much so and these um, like some uneven shadows here there's like a little gradient that a little bit showing that uh, a little bags in there so we're gonna even that out so which uh, I'll, I'll show you in a little bit uh, a simple step also I advise um, the tools that you should be using I advise using a Wacom tablet or a stylus with a pen it doesn't have to be Wacom it can be anything else uh, because it has different pressures that you can do with it so um, the mouse would work okay, but you're gonna have to click dab 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 it. You know what I mean? So uh, that's the only downside if you use a mouse. But I highly advise going to uh, either Amazon, uh, Best Buy, or anywhere where you can get a tablet and at least purchase one. Uh, major graphic designers recommend having them. I do have them on my links in the bottom description below. So. Uh, I have a link to Amazon. I'm one of the Amazon affiliates, so that means that if you go in there, I would get uh, a certain amount. If you purchase something, a certain amount of commission that I might get. So it would definitely help me out if uh, you guys uh, end up clicking it and buying something in Amazon. So anyway, without further ado, I'm gonna move on forward and how to do the dodge burn. So as you see here, we have layer one. I already pre-edited certain parts in here, cleaned up. A lot of uh, stuff in here so I did a little bit of color correction already so but I do want to get into the, the technique of using the curves burn and dodge so first things first you select layer 0 or your first layer of your um, photo you click on this create a new fill or adjustment layer you click on curves once you click on curves make sure you select the curves and what you want to do is you want to invert that to black or I can just like fill it with black that's okay too. fill the black black paint so let's invert it and then you select this um, selection layer over here and then from here you lower it down by one square or like that one column just literally right there and that's how I advise it so do it that way and then from your blending mode, make sure you select luminosity. Obviously, you don't see any changes because we're not making any changes with it yet. So we're using it as a luminosity. So now what you would do is you can either name this if you want, but I'll just leave it curves one. You right click this, you duplicate it. Uh, so you can name it however you like. Let's just name it curve two. Uh, let's make it curve two. You can name it however you like. So, and while this is selected, right, you want to move this in the opposite way. There you go. All right. So that's where it is. So this basically counts like your bright, bright, um, the bright one, and this one will be the darker one. So you'll see the effect of it later on. Once that's done, you create a new layer. Create a new layer, completely blank layer. And then what you do is you create a solid gray by 
There you go. I What I did is like a shift F5 and then click OK. And then everything turns gray. So don't panic. It will be OK. What you need to do while this gray is selected, you click on the blending mode and put it in color. There you go. So now you see a little gray in here. Actually, not a little gray. Actually, a full gray of the whole photo. And the next step is this layer that I'm about to create is actually as a guideline only. You can delete it later on, but this is only a guideline. So you can see which area that is like way too dark or, or you know, basically it's like an optic where you can actually see the, the transition of the dark to the light skin or the, the dark shadow to the lighter shadow. And that's how you want to even things out. So what you do is you click on this create a new fill adjustment layer and we will call it brightness contrast and then while this is bright contrast you see this these are pretty much even leave it at like that for a little bit but we need to do is use legacy so once you use legacy um a slight change of color might change and i might see it but i don't really see anything now what you need to do is move this contrast higher there you go maybe 40 43 doesn't matter so it's up to you and then the brightness either lower or higher so it's up to you now this is your your area where you want to do your adjustment on so just to kind of it's just for you to to see like okay which one do i need to brighten up which one i need to to lighten up and stuff so uh, i use legacy because i can see the, the a bigger transition between the dark and the light better uh, if I turn off use legacy, it just, you know, it can't really, you can't really, it's kind of hard to tell. So, but it's really up to you how you want to do it. You can use legacy or not use legacy. But I like to use legacy because I see a huge change of dark, you know, dark and light. So, as you can see in here, this one's really dark in comparing to this skin over here. Same thing in here. And then this is too bright. And then, and what we want to do is we want to um, lighten them up. And kind of, you know, kind of match the skin color, make it more even. You know, this area over here, this area over here. So, which I'll demonstrate that to you guys in a little bit. So, the next thing you need to do, once you've got this thing figured out, so what we need to do is we're going to use a paintbrush tool, a brush tool actually. So, click on that make sure that it's on the hardness will be on zero so basically uh, you want like a little gradient on the edge part of your brush you don't want to go hard on it or else you see like a hard line painting over it so go to zero the size can be anything you want actually the smaller they are the better so and um, and this is the part that takes time in a little bit i'll show you in a little bit so you can have 32 it's up to you whatever size you want and if you're using a stylus or a Wacom tablet make sure you press this button over here so this is the one that creates that um, that pressure point uh, how hard you want to uh, you know um, how hard uh, the paint brush is gonna be into the image so I keep this 100% opacity the harder I press the the, the stylus the opacity will be 100%. Now, if I lightly press it, maybe it will be 20% of the opacity. In this instance, if we're doing, um, since we're doing, uh, um, um, we need to brighten up this area of here, make sure your flow is at 3%. Actually, everyone recommended 1%, but that's that's for your own, you know, if you want to, it's up to you. But me, I, every time I do my photo edit, it's been really great at 3%. So, 5% is like too much for me. The, 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 I see a drastic change and I have to kind of undo a lot of times. I'm like, because it's it's so drastic of a change whenever I uh, I color uh, I color or dodge these things. So I think 3% is my perfect balance, but it is your call, but keep the flow low. Opacity, 100%, okay? The rest, you can just leave it as is. So now that we have this, we want to select uh, this part here. Remember, this is dark. So if I paint this, 
it will darken these bright areas. Now, if I paint this, whoops, this will brighten the dark area. So what we need to do is I'll select this. Make sure you select this, not this, this, because that's the layer that you want to paint on. And since this is black, what you want to do is, since you have this paint brush selected, make sure you click on white, because this is the area that you want to paint over. So we're going to brighten this dark area. And since mine is already opacity 100% with pressure point and 3% flow, now we can start painting this. So, and then you'll see the effect of it. You'll see how, you'll see gradually this thing is like brightening up. See, there you go. It's brightening up. So that's how I do paint, make it a little bit more even. You have to be very careful. You don't want to do too much of it like all over her face or else it'll look like it's a flat picture you know what I mean so you want to have a, a dimension into her face so as you see in here there's like in here this one's a little too dark let's do that and this area is even this thing out there you go you can do um, you can actually make your brush bigger you just have to be very careful the best the best way to do it is to make the brush as small as possible I know it takes a lot of time smaller brush you know but I think that's the best detail that you can get out of like you're, you're actually targeting those areas that are small otherwise you're gonna affect the other image too where you don't want to brighten up the area so let's just keep on doing that that a little bit of that all right so I think that forehead is a little bit more even now now let's move on to this area this one looks like she's got a bag so we're gonna go clean this thing up I'm just making it brighter there you go I've seen the brightness of it and then make this thing a little brighter so this is what you call dodge so this is how you dodge and uh, I didn't burn yet, but this is dodge basically. Just want to make this thing a little bit brighter. Don't want to do too much of it, or else her face will look too flat. You know what I mean? So well, we can zoom in more. We can even go to the nook crannies of things. Sometimes this thing is just like way too dark. So there you go. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff. It takes time for this to. To go through if you're one of those people who already trained your eye to be a pixel hunter this is it folks this is it you go basically into the into the face you'll see everything so I know it's, it's so intimidating because it's like so tedious doing this but for that one great picture it's definitely worth it you know so and unfortunately there's no other shortcut way to do this and uh, a lot of photographers and vid and photo editors can tell you that you know you have to know and do it the long way you know so but you do your best to create certain shortcuts to make your job a lot easier right, don't do too much of these not too much of that because Obviously, you don't want to lose the, the, what do you call that? The depth of this. So, I do want to clean this area up and make it brighter because it's just way too dark. There you go. All right. Let's clean that up a little bit. Yeah, even that thing up. Even this thing up. On the dark area, you have to be careful sometimes too. You don't want to go too bright on the darkest area like basically turning uh, the actual shadow to bright you know to brighten them up because or else it'll just add more noise so probably might have some of that right now because I think I brightened this thing too bright so but we'll see right just doing it lightly because I can always darken them up or I can even smooth them out afterwards there you go. 
lighten this area up a little bit why this one I like this area I don't want to change this area too much because or else I'll lose a dimension oh, there you go looks like this one is not as even have to darken it up then so if that happens what you can do is select this or you can even color it black to kind of go back to how you used to do it so I'm gonna color it black just a little bit of it because I think I did too much of it and go or you can go here and select white to brighten that area up that works too but I like my uh, where where I could <laughs> Uh, revert back by coloring this thing black so all right I think because I did too much of it and then eh. yeah just uh, I think uh, there you go. let's do that 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 okay going back to right now so I can do this that's one thing that uh you also have to to do when doing this thing is sometimes you can get tired of looking at the same thing take a break get your eyes a little break because sometimes you you know you seem black and white the whole time and you don't know how much you've changed and you know and at the same time you don't want to do it too close either not, not too close or not too far that you're doing it just right and um, fix it from there so this one's a little too bright so let's try to fix this right so I'm gonna go here which is the darker side and make sure white is selected then we're gonna darken this thing just a little bit just a little bit there you go just clean it up even up that skin this one's a little too bright for me let's make it darker a little bit just darker this one is a little bit there you go and this one and what else uh, what else there this one i think that's pretty good so uh, let me, this one's kind of bugging me a little bit let me fix this there we go all right excellent and obviously I do this too this is just for my own um, way of doing things I like to brighten up her eyes I'll just brighten this thing up so it looks like it pops out so when I do my finished editing it makes it easier for me to to um, to edit this that her eyes do pop out so anyways that's her face right so we only done the face we didn't do the whole body but I just want to show you the sample of what it could do now what you do is you, if you see this over here, the brightness contrast, if you turn this thing off, you'll see the effect of it, right? Obviously, we'll turn this gray one off too. So that's the final image of how it looked like. Now, if I turn them both off, both of these curves, you'll see the before and after. So I'll turn this thing off. Boop. See that? See all that uneven areas? So now adding... This bottom over here, this is the shadow. Uh, I'm actually adding more shadow. There you go. You barely see it, but it helps. And then now if I add the highlight by evening them all out, boom, there you go. So yeah, that's it, folks. So if, um, if you guys like this video tutorial, make sure you guys subscribe and like this video. And I uh, hope to see you guys in the next one. Later. As some of you might know, I have a Patreon website. The URL is patreon.com slash iamphotovideos. Once you get there, you will see different tiers that you can join in. Each of these tiers has different exclusive access, such as glamour photography, uh, fashion photography, and other car photography. I also sometimes would post free stuff so if you'd like to see some sample of my work. Joining in is easy. 
just by clicking one of these join button whichever tiers you like to join or you can click on become a patreon thanks for watching